Hey everybody, this is Mad Panda Games here, and today we're going to be tackling another part of Wishes and Pen Chrysanthemums in August. So let's get started, guys. And we're just here at this strange bar we've never noticed before. Let's do this. Click. Wait, do I enter? There it is. Wait, no, can I go back? Aw, oh, damn it. Well, here we are. Wow. As soon as we enter, an atmosphere of warmth and coziness envelops us. It's nice. That rarely happens in any of the noisy, crowded bars we usually end up in. Wow, this place is lovely. Even the interior is way classier than the other bars we've been to. We make our way towards the bar counter where a handsome and stylish man is waiting with a warm smile on his face. Welcome! Oh yeah, he's sexy. He's sexy. He seems to be around the same age as us, or maybe a tad bit older. Ooh, older man, huh? Hello there, welcome to Di Dynamis. Welcome to Dynamis. Dynamis, that's a unique name for a bar. Is the owner a foreigner? Mm, I could suppose you can say that. I feel my heart skip a beat as he looks at me with a charming smile. He's sexy, he's sexy. There's something about this guy that I can't seem to put my finger on. He seems so... angelic. So, what can I get you girls tonight? A margarita for me, please. How about you, Hikari? Oh, uh, I'll take a sochu. One margarita and one sochu coming right up. Just as the bartender moves away from us, Chi starts nudging me on the arm with a mischievous grin. I saw that. Saw what? That dreamy look you had for Mr. Bartender. Oh, ho, ho. What's not? You're just hallucinating. Oh, we're blushing. We're blushing. We have the hots for the bartender. We have the hots for the bartender. When are you going to make out with them? Right. Like, I'd believe that. Uh, get off my case. And could you please be a little quieter? Grumbling and turning away in embarrassment, I hear Chi snickering with amusement. I wonder what his name is. Should I ask? I mean, if you want to, but... Hey, Mr. Bartender. My friend here wants to know your name. Oh, no. What? Ch Chi, what are you doing? Oh, this pretty lady here wants to know my name? Oh, he thinks we're pretty. Placing our drinks on the counter, the bartender looks straight at me with an amused expression. I guess you can call me Subasa. Is that a question? See, see, took the words out of my mouth, Hikari. Huh? Why did that sound more like a question than an answer? But more than that, why is he looking at me so intensely? Cause he's sexy, you sexy, and they like each other. I try my best to avoid Tsubasa's gaze by going straight for my drink, all the while secretly praying he didn't see my cheeks turn red. Oops, guess someone's calling. Excuse me, ladies. I'll be right back. Swiftly bowing with a sweet smile, Tsubasa quickly heads to the back, allowing me to breathe a sigh of relief. Hikari, don't down your drink like that in front of a guy. It's so uncool. This is all you're doing. Why did you say I wanted to know his name? Because you wouldn't have asked if I didn't. And he seems to like you too anyway, so does it really matter? Not really. He's hot. Hold on. There it is. Sorry, it was more for a second. Of course it does! No, not really. Urgh, you know what? I am so done with you. You aren't. But anyway, cheers to you finally maybe getting a boyfriend. Don't forget what I taught you, okay? Remember to sit up straight and don't slouch your burp! You know, I'm really starting to regret going out with you tonight. <laughs> this is either gonna get really good or really bad. Oh, we drunk. I am so regretting going out with you tonight. I knew this would happen. For some reason, Chi looks frustrated as I take another sip. I don't really get what her deal with. Her deal is, it's just one drink. Oh, we're drunk as hell. Just one. Come on, Chi. Relax a little. Why so angry? It's just one drink. Uh, uh, angry? Is that even a word? And one drink? Hikari, you had more than three glasses! What do you mean, only one drink? Ah, stop being so hysterical! You're going to scare Mr. Subasa here! <laughs> He's so cute, though! Oh my! 
Aren't you a bold one? Subasa chuckles and I grin like a giddy schoolgirl. <laughs> this I'm sorry, this is just Oh, this is funny. Th this is great. This is this is the greatest experience so far. I'm so happy we went to this bar tonight. He really is cute, this guy. <laughs> and oh my god, she I really hate our boss. Why is he so <gasps> mean to me? Dear God, not hysteric, Ikari. What did I ever do to him? Subasa, tell me, is there something wrong with me? Am I just not good enough? I, I can't stop laughing. I can't stop laughing. This is hysterical. Just, just being a drunk person, this is so hysterical. Even though my mind is hazy with alcohol, I managed to blurt out a genuine question. This is something I've always asked myself, whether I've ever been good enough for anything. A part of me feels like I was made for something bigger and better than this mundane life, but at the same time, another part of me can't help but wonder whether I'm even special or talented to begin with. I always feel like I'm just another person in this world who's neither here nor there. Be it with my work, or friends, or my whole life. Am I really... alive? Man, drunk Ikari is existential crisis, Ikari. Is this really the way to live? No, it's not. It never was, never will be. All I want is to just... feel alive again. Is that too much to ask for? Aww. Oh, we're crying. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm crying. I'm really drunk and I'm crying right now. Oh, Hikari. Oh, Subasa, why are you still here? We are having, we are having a moment. Why are you still here? Can you just walk away for a little bit? I know you're sexy and all, but we are having an existential crisis right now. So back away, man. I hate this so much. <laughs> Gee, Supas. <laughs> Does this happen often? Her being a mess after drinking? Yeah. Chi sighs, giving me a sympathetic look while I continue blubbering incomprehensible things. Why is this happening to me? How can. Basu expect me to work harder if he does should give me a promotion or accept me even. <laughs> That's rough, but hey. I feel someone drawing close to me. I look up in a daze, sloppily wiping my eyes and nose, and meet Tsubasa's kind gaze. If you had the chance, would you really rather live another life? Another life? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yes. Even if you don't know what the other side may hold, just because it looks pretty doesn't mean it's all cherry and cupcakes, you know? I can feel my consciousness drifting away, even as I try my best to keep my eyes open. It's fine. Oh, now we're asleep. Yeah, it's okay. Anywhere but here. Eh? Hikari! Oi! Oh, now we're asleep. Okay. Where am I? Wasn't I at the bar with Chi? Ugh, the sun's too bright. My head hurts. Slowly getting up, I press my palm against my throbbing head. What in the world happened? Oh. Oh. Bits of memories from late last night slowly comes back to me. And I can only cringe at the monster that I became in front of Chi and Tsubasa. Yeah, uh, okay, I know you're upset, but that, that was literally the funniest thing. This, that was so good. That was so good. Oh my god, what is he going to think of me from now on? And what is Chi going to say to me when I call her later? The thought of what Chi might do to me sends shivers down my spine. I promised her I wouldn't get all drunk, and yet... Oh boy... I am so dead. I, sl I sluggishly turn to the bedside drawer, already thinking up of all the apologies I'm going to write her when I see a post-it note neatly placed beside my phone. You're lucky we have two days off or else. 
Anyway, I brewed some tea for you and there's some food in the fridge. Feel better soon. P.S. Let's never go drinking again. Chi. Phew. At least she doesn't sound angry. She sounds more exasperated, like I knew this would happen, but I allowed you to drag me under anyway. Thanks, Chi. I plop back onto the bed, my head still a spinning mess. I try to think back on what transpired earlier, but the only thing I can remotely remember is meeting a handsome bartender, drinking myself silly, and making a huge fool of myself. And in front of a cute guy, too. Ugh. Ugh. What's the point in thinking about all this? I should just sleep it off. A short while later, I fall back asleep. Okay. I open my eyes, but I can't see. I'm breathing, but my chest is cold and heavy. What happened? It must be the stupid alcohol. I don't think it's the stupid alcohol. I think something's happening. A bitter aftertaste lingers on my tongue, and I swallow in an attempt to get rid of it. All of a sudden, it's difficult to breathe. My face is damp, and so is my chest. Uh-oh, this can't be good. Wait, is my head nearly buried underwater? What? What? What the hell? I mean, I knew this was happening because of the demo, the description, but still. That came out of nowhere. We're drowning! My eyes snap open as I lift my head, gasping for air. Water sputters from my mouth and nose as I sit up, chest heaving erratically as I cough. Ugh, where am I? I try to wipe my mouth at the back of my sleep, only to realize that that's soaked, just like the rest of me. My situation finally dawns on me with a shiver. I'm sitting in cold, shallow water. What the hell? You think if we were transported to the past, we'd at least be transported somewhere nicer. And instead, we almost drowned. I turn left and right, frantically surveying the dark and unfamiliar surroundings. Water continues to flow beneath me. A stream? What the? I scramble to my feet and shuffle toward the road, but there isn't one. It's just sand and dirt clinging to my legs. As I climb out of the water, pebbles litter the ground too. Am I dreaming? What is this? Thick trees rustle along to a slight breeze, and the gentle stream that really woke me disappears into the unknown. What's going on? Wasn't I in my room? Was that a dream? Did she dump me in a river? Wow. I mean, I guess her best friend was angry, but I don't think she was that angry to try and kill us. What am I thinking? She wouldn't do that. Yeah, of course. Unless she really hated us, but I don't think she did. Did I go drunk walking? It wouldn't be the first time. What? You need to lock your doors then if you go drunk walking. Oh my gosh, that's a danger to society and both you. But that doesn't explain why all the houses around me look so old. Did I wander into the more traditional side of Kyoto? Ugh, it doesn't matter. I might as well find a way to get home. It's so cold too. My resolve is unbreakable until I take my first step away from the river. My feet are caked in dirt. I don't even have shoes on? I need to get home. Fast. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. Nothing in this part of the city makes sense. Everyone being dressed in clothing from Japanese history, I get. Not carrying any cell phones for authenticity, fine. But not knowing what a telephone is, calling me crazy and turning me away, that is just rude. But at the same time, I can't even find any cars or bicycles. No signs pointing to the subway. No nearby buildings whatsoever. I have a bad feeling about this. Excuse me, where are we? In the capital, of course. Where did you think, girl? This is Tokyo. You're kidding, right? The man gives me a confused look before walking off. I try again, following him. Um, okay. Do you know how I can get back to Kyoto, then? I haven't seen a single car at all. What are you talking about, girl? You are in Kyoto. Could this be one of those towns preserved with old buildings for tourists to get a taste of history? Did she enter me into some immersive game of pretend? Again, she might have been angry, but I don't think she would do that and not tell you. Ugh, this isn't funny anymore. 
I cry out, latching onto the woman's arm. If this is some game, they'll let me out once they know I don't want to play anymore, right? Please, I have to get home. Not you! Let go of me! Ack! Don't sneeze in front of me! She shoves me away and eyes begin turning to me. They're curious at first, but the more I ask for help, the more people start to whisper. Soon they start to brush me away or scurry off altogether at my approach. I groan after several attempts and rest my back against an alley corner. Ugh. What's going on? I heard there was a lunatic wandering about. It's that girl. She doesn't seem to think she's in Kyoto and keeps asking passerby how to get back to the capital. Or for a... a cell... something... something like that. They're starting to whisper about me, too. Doesn't think she's in Kyoto. Did the girl hit her head? Where does she think she is? Before the others can answer, they notice me watching from the side and scurry off. They think I'm crazy? They're the ones who are acting insane. I don't know, maybe. Either their dedication to this farce is just that intense, or they really aren't pretending at all. But if this is really Kyoto, wouldn't that make it a question of exactly when in Kyoto? There are no buildings nearby. Man, we're smart. We're already piecing this together. The thought makes my head spin. I can't be. How would that even work? Time travel doesn't happen in real life. It's a plot device. Haha, <laughs> plot device. Huh. <laughs> I get that. And yet, the way these people talk about me isn't the way people pranking just one person do. An entire town or city can't be that invested in a lie for the sake of a joke. Which can only mean... Part of me doesn't want to find out, but I have to. This has got to be some kind of game. These people are obviously playing a dumb trick on me. Maybe I have to play by their rules to get out. Taking a deep breath, I approach one of the new faces on the road. I sneeze right as I reach him. That's you! Oh, excuse me, sir. Do we still have a shogunate? What do you mean? Of course, girl. Huh. So I was right. If they're still in power, that means... That villager takes a step back, watching me sniffle with a measuring look. Be careful what you say, girl. Lord Takugawa has ears everywhere, even in these troubled times. Troubled times? Oh, that cannot be good for our protagonist, Hikaru. Tokugawa? Wait, which one? Or how about... Who's the emperor now? Is the old Bakufu really still... Before the man can answer, his eyes shift to something behind me. Oh, that can't be good. I have no idea what she's talking about. Forgive me! With a rushed bow, he runs off. I turn around to face two guards watching me. The old Bakufu? What are you talking about? We heard reports that a young woman was asking about a cell. Could that be you? I rub my nose, ignoring the scratchy feeling in it and in my throat. No, I meant a cell phone. A cell phone. Please tell me you know what I'm talking about. I'm not playing games. Neither are we. You're going to have to come with us to the station, miss. Wait, you just misheard. Please let me explain. If this really is the past, then... What happened in Kyoto? Come on, Ikari. Think. You were playing Historoki just a few weeks ago. My brain is foggy from all the sneezing, but my panic and past knowledge from the game helps me come up with something. I know! What about that battle that lasted four days? The one Saigo Takamori and Prince Akihito were involved in. I was just hoping for a tale of how the great and powerful Imperial troops fought in battle. They did come out victorious against the Shogunate army after all. Now the guards are looking at me like I'm a lunatic. Oh no, did I date their clothes wrong? Their uniforms suggest the decline of the Shogunate. Where's Chi when I need her? What I meant was, that's enough. Be silent. You'll explain what you meant at the station. He nudges his head at the other man, and they grab me by each arm. Hey, you there. The guards whirl, turning me around with them. Before us stands a tall man with a stoic expression and a katana at his side. He's hot too. A samurai? The men stand at attention at once and bow, forcing me to do the same. Hey, Hikari bows to no one. We are a strong, independent woman. I'm lost in time, but this does not mean we will bow to you. 
Lord Yatsua! He inclines his head, then quirks a brow in my direction. As I sneeze again, the guards scramble to answer. Oh, uh, Lord Yasua, we're simply taking this young woman to the station. She was spouting incomprehensible lies that may as well be sedition. Sedition? No! You misheard because of my sneezing! Silence, girl! What? Enough. Release her. His tone is commanding, even without raising his voice, and all three of us fall silent. But, but, but my lord! This woman is one of ours, sent to sniff out seditious elements. This was her way of returning to us to debrief me on her mission. Do you understand? Release her. Well, I'm pretty sure that is a bold-faced lie. But if he's helping us out, I will not look a gift horse in the mouth. He tells the guards, then turns to me. You may drop the act. Um... I don't know who he is, but following him is better than getting thrown into prison. Maybe he'll even let me out of the game faster. Girl, it is not a game. You need to, you need to accept that. Yes, my lord. Hachu! Sorry. Uh, of course, Lord Yatsuya. They let me go, inclining their heads in apology. I rub my arms painfully, but I'm just as clueless as they are. Let us be on our way. He starts walking, throwing a glance over his shoulder to make sure I follow suit. With a nod, I trail after him. His eyes are trained to the path ahead as we move. Thanks, Yatsuya. You're cool. You're cool in my book. Thank you so much for getting me out of that situation. He watches me from the corner of his eye at that. Not glaring, just waiting. My lord. I finish wrinkling my itchy nose and he turns to the road again. He's awfully quiet, but at least he isn't trying to arrest me. Yeah, look at the, look at the positive side, Hikari. Be positive. May I ask the name of our current emperor? His Majesty, the Emperor Meiji. Meiji? So the court is still in Kyoto, but Emperor Komei has died? How is it possible to live in Kyoto without knowing His Majesty's name? Because I time traveled, and I'm from a very different Kyoto. But I should never say that, cause or else things are gonna go crazy fast. I just forgot for a moment, that's all. Really. Just as I'm to forget that you casually mentioned a supposed four-day battle against the Shogunate. I stop in my tracks, confused. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't even realize he'd stop to face me. Or that we're alone in a narrow side alley. Oh no. I think we just got into an even worse situation. He stares me down. I feel myself shrinking back in fear. Tell me how you know of such things. Especially about an event that didn't even occur. I... I wasn't mistaken. There aren't any fights happening soon. Soon? Oh, that's not good. Uh-oh. I survey my surroundings, but he has me trapped in the alley. With how close he's standing, he can easily catch me if I try to run. I suggest you start telling the truth, miss. I could easily return you to those guards otherwise. Achoo! Ugh. Distracting me with your sneezing isn't going to work. I intend to have answers. I'm not! If I were pretending to be sick, why would I choose to just keep sneezing of all things? I demand angrily, but he doesn't budge. He's standing even closer, just watching me wipe my face and sniffle. I feel guilty for yelling me. For yelling. He saved me after all, but this game is starting to get on my nerves. Still, he's showing no signs of breaking this weird facade. If I'm pretending to be a native to this time, I can't tell him how I know about the Battle of Toba Fushimi. It was nothing. I just dreamt that the Shogunate was so fed up that he decided to attack Kyoto, which led to a long battle. Yeah, that's all it was. I was mistaken. I speak as calmly as possible, trying to show him I'm being truthful. We are not being truthful at all. It has the opposite effect. His eyes widen. Now you claim to be a seer? What? No, I just... Then what is it? Are you a seer or a spy? His composure, even as he bears down on me, is just a little terrifying. What do I do? I'm not a spy, I promise. I don't remember all the details about this era, but I know it's never a good time to be a spy. Yeah. He takes a long, intense look at me, measuring, and then opens his mouth to speak. Hachoo! Whatever he was about to say dies on his lips. Instead, he sighs. Come with me. With a hand on my shoulder, he guides me out of the alleyway and onto the main road.
Most of the guards making rounds in the city bow to him as he passed, and murmurs follow us through the city. I barely notice. It's like they made a perfect replica of pre-Meiji Restoration Area Kyoto. But how? I don't want to follow this man, but he didn't exactly give me a choice. And what if he's letting me out of the game now that I've played enough of it? It's not a game, girl! It's not a game. That must be it, right? What was that? Yatsuo's calm voice breaks me out of my daze. I didn't notice, but now we're at a guardhouse with two more guards staring me down suspiciously. Dang, this is pretty! This is a guardhouse. This is a nice guardhouse. I incline my head as soon as I make eye contact. An agent of ours. I cleared her a fortnight ago. Are you telling me there is no record of my letter? The guards startle at his low tone and scramble to bow to him. No, Lord Yatsuya. Surely it was a mistake on our part. Please proceed. Where are we going? My lord. I am the last part lamely. I keep forgetting about their formalities. Yatsuya squeezes my shoulder as if telling me to be quiet. We continue ahead, emerging into a great courtyard until we stand before several large houses with beautiful architecture. This place looks familiar. Then again, its design was probably inspired by some old noble residence. We pass beautiful gardens and several more houses and hallways when it hits me. This isn't just some old noble residence. This is Kyoto's old imperial palace. Or a replica. Yeah, of course. A replica. A very good one. I think that, but I feel goosebumps rising on my arms and the back of my neck as we move through the palace grounds. Guards and servants moving about greet Yatsuya politely, throwing me confused glances before going on their way. This cannot be good. I'm speechless until one of the hallways leads us to a small residence. Yatsuya speaks to the man at the door and beckons me inside. This is nice too. Cabinets and shelves filled with various bottles and instruments line the walls of the peculiar office, a large desk filled with thick stacks of paper in one corner. Doctor, are you here? Doctor, this is a clinic? Oh, he's here to help us! A silence follows his voice, then the clinic side door slides open. Oh, it's the sexy doctor man! A man with a cup of tea in his hand enters, walking past us to sit behind his desk and flip through one of his notebooks. Dr. Yori. Achoo! The man looks up in surprise, blinking as he glances between me and Yatsuya. His confusion lingers on my clothes. Lord Yatsuya, what is this? His voice mirrors the polite smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Oh, and it's not really a polite smile, is it? I'm sorry. But you know male physicians may not attend to concubines. Excuse me. I am not a concubine. I, I'm not even supposed to be here. Can I leave? The physician looks even more confused, and the samurai ignores me completely. Then what are you doing here? Lord Yatsuya, you know I make exceptions for grave illnesses, but... Just give her something for her cold, please. Okay, then. The physician sighs, but shuts his notebook and gets to his feet. He disappears into the room where he came from, leaving me in the clinic with Yatsuya. I'm fine, you know. If you just let me out of here, I have my own cough drops and vitamins at home. Cough drops? Vitamins? Are these the tools you use to divine the future? Er, how much longer do I have to put up with this? I've pretended long enough. No, cough drops. Ugh, this is useless. Can you please just let me out already? I know you want me to play along, but can't you see I'm tired of this silly game? I'm literally catching a cold right now. What more do you want from me? Ah, uh, we shouldn't have said that. Yatsuya's eyes narrow at me. You consider this a game? Uh-oh. He draws closer again, looming over me. I've given you the benefit of the doubt and took you to Yori because you appeared ill. But if the safety of the Emperor and his people is a game to you, that I may be inclined to believe those guards. And an enemy spy, even if she is a woman, is something I cannot abide. With that, he draws his katana from its sheath. Oh, hell no. Seriously? Whoa, don't you think threatening with a- Ow! I push the blade away from me, only for it to draw blood from three of my fingers. My fingers are bleeding? Actual blood is coming out of my fingers? What? Those are real? Did you just draw a real katana to threaten me with? What is wrong with you? What's going on in here? The side door slides open again, 
Pot of tea in hand, Iori almost stumbles in at the sight of us. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm with Iori, what the hell? You, he, he drew a real sword to my face. You could have killed me. Only if you posed a real threat. Iori sets the pot down on his desk and steps in between us, looking almost furious. Lord Yatsua, there will be no weapons drawn in my clinic. Of all those in the palace, I did not expect you to spill the blood of an arm armed woman. I did no such thing. She touched the blade herself. He sounds indignant, but he she's the katana. How was that my fault? I thought it was a prop! Iori might be able to stay calm, but I'm close to hysterical. My fingers are still bleeding. That jerk almost killed me! Iori turns to me, bewildered as he takes my hand. You touched the blade of a samurai's katana? Are you mad? Sit down. He points to one of the two seats in front of his desk. I open my mouth to protest, but his stern look tells me to not even try. I shoot Yatsuya a dirty look before watching Iori go through his cabinet. He sits on the chair across me, gesturing to my injured hand. Luckily, this should heal in time. He smears some pungent ointment over my fingers and wraps small bandages around each of them. When he finishes, he motions to the teapot. This tea should suffice for your cold. Ginger, honey, and sugar in boiling water. You can make this at home. Now, he sighs, giving Yatsuya a look. I almost feel smug until he gives me the same one. I feel like a student about to get scolded by my homeroom teacher all over again. Would either of you care to tell me what really brought you here? And why you, Lord Yatsuya, thought it appropriate to draw a weapon in my clinic? Yatsuya doesn't miss a beat. He starts before I can even begin to gather my thoughts. I found this woman on the streets wildly insisting on a non-existent battle. What? At first, I thought her a mere lunatic, but her proclamations were oddly detailed, and when I questioned her, a word slipped and caught my attention. Soon. To imply the battle had yet to take place. I wasn't proclaiming anything, and that's not what I meant at all. I was just... When I questioned her, she claimed to be a seer. A seer? I suppose that would explain such strange clothing. Why did you bring her here? I never... She didn't seem to have the makings of a spy. Not initially. And if not a seer, I thought she might be delirious with some unknown illness. Yori quirks a brow, touching the back of his warm hand to my forehead. She doesn't appear to have a fever. I'm not! She appears innocent to me. But if you believe she must be a spy, the one to ask is... Stop! Stop. I raise my voice again, waving my hands just to get their attention. The two finally notice that I'm right here. You know what? This is a nice script and all, and really very interesting and believable, but please just let me go home. You will return home when we have verified your information, and if true, determined how you came upon it. No! I'm not doing this anymore! I never asked to be in this ridiculous LARPing session! LARPing? I angrily get to my feet. Guess what? I know the future because I'm from there. How's that for breaking your immersion? Can I go home now? There, I told you. She claims to be a seer. I see what you mean. No, that's not what I mean at all. I glance between the two, ready to throttle at least one of them. They watch me doubtfully, and suddenly it's like something falls into place in my mind. Do they really not know what I'm talking about? This isn't an act, is it? No, I'm just stressed. It's got to be stress. Please stop. What do I have to do to get you to stop? I don't even realize my good hand has a grip on Iori's arm until he places his hand on top of it. Stop what, miss? Yatsuya only shakes his head when Iori shoots him a worried glance, as if he's saying, my point exactly. You know, you know this isn't real. I didn't even sign up for this period, please. Please! Miss, please calm down. Please, please don't cry. I'm not! I deny it, only to realize how blurry my vision is and how shallow my breaths are. I'm just... Some guy drew a real sword against me and almost killed me. I'm sick, I'm coming down with something, I just want to go back to the hotel, but I get dragged into some palace backdrop and I'm about to get tetanus and... I finally stop blubbering once I burst into frustrated tears and my hands are covering my face. It's embarrassing to cry in front of strangers, but I can't help it. And even then, they just stare at me, glancing at each other unsurely. Yatsuya briefly extends his hand before balling it into a fist and withdrawing. 
They're not denying it. They think this is real. Either they're insane or... The door abruptly slides open. The man who enters pauses, blinking at all of us, and then immediately rushes to my side. Oh, there's another person. Wait, wait, okay. Before I... I'm, I'm gonna stop here. I know it seems a little bit of a cliffhanger, but I know if I continue going, it's gonna be like almost 50 minutes. So I'm gonna save here. I'm going to save here. Right when we meet the mysterious man. Yes, I want to overwrite this. Cool. And just... I'm just making sure. Yep, it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Okay, so I'm going to sign out here. This is Mad Panda signing out. If you like my content and you want to see more content like this, please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. Once again, this is Mad Panda signing out. See you later, guys.